Hello and Assalamu alaikum. I am Parvez Khan. I am an assistant professor in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication, Kohat University of Science and Technology. The subject is Intercultural Communication. Course code is JMC201. It's our lecture number 14, which is Polychronic and Monochronic Culture and Concept of Time. We are basically focusing on the concept of time in these cultures. So we'll be discussing the objectives first. Students will be able to understand that each culture has its specific dynamics to understand that the concept of time and ways of organizing things are different in various cultures. Students will be able to understand the dynamics of polychronic and monochronic concept of time. Uh, this is what we'll be discussing the polychronic and monochronic concept of time, how it shapes our relationships, how it affects uh, the way we organize things and how uh, it shapes uh, culture as a whole, how we can categorize uh, people into monochronic and polychronic concept of time. Uh, we must understand that uh, uh, the cultural differences uh, in time perception have been cited for many years, but this issue has recently gained prominence. And these differences in the perception of time cause differences in the way people organize their time and behavior. So the important words here are time and behavior. And, and obviously, uh, when you understand the term much better, uh, the polychronic and the monochronic will understand that the people organize their behavior in accordance to the time and uh, the, the, the concept of time that is whether it's polychronic whether it's monochronic so the concept of time is very much important and that's why uh, today we'll be discussing this in uh, much more detail as you can see that uh, yes it's just a simple clock but it's just the concept of time that matters the space that you're living in uh, it may be 11 o'clock uh, in Europe, it may be 11 o'clock in Asia, that, that, that's on the clock. But how people perceive time, that's the important thing and that's what we are going to talk about. To talk about it in simple words, what is the monochronic cultures like to do? And uh, we'll talk about it, that the monocultures, uh, monochronic cultures like to do one thing at a time. They value a certain orderless, uh, orderliness and sense of their being got an appropriate time and place for everything, uh, they do not value interruptions. But opposite to that is uh, polychronic cultures, which, which where they do uh, like multiple things at a time. But to go in much more detail, let's go and talk about the mon monochronic uh, concept of time. What it is, uh, how, how we can understand uh, the cultures that are associated with monochronic and uh, what does it value more? Uh, is it uh, group oriented? Is it... Uh, individual oriented what it is uh, what's so we'll talk about it so monochronic uh, approach means essentially doing one thing at a time uh, to the monochronic individual time is tangible it's valuable it's much more important than anything else and similarly schedules are of extreme importance and in fact time is treated as a commodity of high value so it's given much more importance uh, i mean you think about the time as money and time in terms of good work and relationship, but time is the most important thing. And obviously, since Edward T. Hall has written a lot about it, so according to Edward Hall, uh, the monochronic perceptions of time can be found primarily in North American and North European cultures, uh, where the time is linear, monochronic time is linear, events are scheduled one at a time, with one event following the other. So you can see it's linear, it's sequential, it's like it's not like scattered, it's not like dynamic, uh, it's pretty straightforward and it's just one event at a time. This is what usually the North American and Northern European countries focus on. Uh, and this is why they're called low context cultures as well, uh, because they like doing one thing at a time. They prefer schedules. They prefer uh, the things that are explicitly written uh, uh, compared to our, where we, uh, our cultures or the polychronic cultures where things are complex, where there's a lot of context to it. Uh, so this is the low context culture. Whenever we talk about monochronic, so it's basically low context culture that we are talking about. We have discussed already what low context culture is, so you can relate it to that. So in addition to this, we can now talk about the polychronic concept of time. What is polychronic? As you can see that obviously mono means single and poly means multi. So you can clearly understand what it means that the polychronic time by contrast is characterized by several events happening simultaneously. And since several events are happening simultaneously, so you can talk about it and con consider it as polychronic. And according to Hall's theory, interpersonal relationships are highly valued in uh, polychronic cultures. 
uh, time is less tangible and emphasis is placed on involvement of people. Uh, and the competition uh, and the completion of transactions rather than on schedules. Uh, it's more about the transactions. It's multitasking is valued. And some of the cultures are Latin American, African and Native American cultures. And it's important to look into these cultures. If someone has been to these cultures that for them, relationships are much more important than time. It depends on how much the relationships are, how the groups are being together, how how they react to each other, that's much more important than just uh, scheduling and time. And similarly, their perception of time is considered to be more connected to natural rhythms and to the earth and to the seasons. That's an important point. And polychronic is called much more natural. It's considered much more universal compared to the uh, monochronic because it's, uh, it's considered as natural rhythms and people react with people, uh, interact with each other in groups and they look at the weathers and seasons and that's how they respond particularly uh, in, in primitive cultures as well, the time, the concept of time was uh, polychronic. Now, looking into the uh, dictionary definition, polychronic is performing elements of different tasks concurrently as opposed to sequentially. It's concurrently as things are happening. It's, se it's not sequential. Uh, multiple things can happen at the same time. And this means that polychronic cultures tend to do many things simultaneously. This is the most important point about polychronic cultures that simultaneously many things are happening. So it's basically a culture built on multitasking. The, the important word is multitasking and um, people are doing multiple things at a the time. They'll be talking, they'll be working, they'll be laughing, but that's how, uh, that's how it goes. And characterized by a system where things are done one at a time and contempor contemporaneous, it's just like it's unless we're talking about the monochronic culture, having or relating to a personality type which prefers to set a certain time to perform each task. So, oppositely, we talk about when we, contra we contrast these two. So, monochronic cultures likes to focus on one task at a time. And now we'll talk about much more detail, uh, simplified words. In monochronic cultures, what do you see? The most common thing that you see in monochronic culture is that uh, one thing, they focus on one thing at a time. Uh, that's the important thing that they, not, they do not want too much uh, things to be scattered out. It's not how exactly the things are, but mostly when we categorize the monochronic cultures, they like to be much more specific. They like to concentrate on tasks without disturbing others. And this is uh, another that the concept of time here is linear and deadlines are serious. Uh, this is why we see that when you are living in the West or you're, you're experiencing a culture which is monochronic, uh, mostly uh, the schedules are uh, and deadlines are there. The time is linear, time is money, a lot of value is given to the time because th th that's a serious business, that's how they deal with it. They want explicit notes to be written. This is how monochronic cultures work. And the important thing to talk about, what kind of communication takes place in all this monochronic culture. So communication is basically low context. Whenever we talk about monochronic cultures, we just discussed is mainly that the communication is low context in these cultures and that's why that, that they want the information to be explicitly written uh, and the information is quite direct and this is what they focus on that the explicit information is required and similarly when we talk about work so obviously uh, scheduling and all these uh, emphasis on hard work is basically the work is swift and prompt it's just like uh, you're working you're there, they're paying you, you have to work, and that's how it goes. That's, that's the system. That's how monochronic cultures are defined. But obviously, always we must always remember that there are serious exceptions. Uh, some cities, some places, or some work group, they can behave differently based on their exposure, based on their grooming, based on their education. So it's not necessary that uh, things have to be exactly. But when we generally categorize it according to Hall's theory, uh, that's how monochronic cultures are, according to Edward T. Hall. Now, we'll talk about the uh, polychronic cultures. Uh, what is polychronic? Obviously, uh, we talked and discussed that they like doing multiple things at a time. It's not just uh, sequential. Uh, you, you, can, you can say that uh, concurrently many things are happening and simultaneously you're dealing with multiple things. It's not just one thing that you have to talk about. And interruptions aren't really interruptions. They can carry on with what they're doing. 
A good example would be in a newsroom where you're writing a story and someone will be talking, someone will be laughing, they will ask you for ideas. Mr. So-and-so, can you tell me about this? Even though you're working, they, they, they'll keep bothering and they're discussing. That's how this culture is. And it's understandable. No one minds it. This is how it works. An important thing to further elaborate on, on this polychronic cultures is that uh, time is spatial. I mean, what do you mean by time is spatial? Because the deadlines and uh, schedules can be kept if possible, but time is spatial. Uh, there's a lot of time. Uh, you, can, you can even uh, cross deadlines and people understand that, yes, you'll be still working on it. It's not necessary. And this time is this concept, deadlines and schedules, that can be problematic when a, when a person from polychronic culture visits monochronic culture. And that, that's, the, that's a bit of problem that happens that usually uh, people don't understand each other, especially from the management point of view. If you are late for work, uh, that can be problematic. And sometimes uh, as a management uh, course, you, you need to be understanding you need to be uh, having a good understanding of how your workers are, from which culture they've come, because that's how uh, it defines them. And that's important to understand, and that brings into play the role of communication. So communication in polychronic culture is high context. So if you are going to a culture other than yours, it's very important to look into communication. You have to, very important to look into the polychronic and monochronic concept of time, because otherwise, there will be bad communication, there will be no communication, it can create further problems uh, that can be a lot more uh, problematic in terms of communication. And obviously, since it's high context, there's no need for explicit information as they already depend on networks and context and backgrounds. So there's really no need for, for, for anything else because the information is written explicitly in places where, where there's no context to it. Uh, where they just depend on the uh, written format. But here we have conventions, we have a lot of history, we have a lot of context to things. So that's why polychronic cultures, they rely mostly on relationships. And that's why uh, they are more relationship oriented than task oriented. For example, if you have a good relationship with someone, you can get the work done quickly and, and efficiently because the, the, that's your team, that's how they work, that's how they look forward. And relationships are key in polychronic cultures. And similarly, the swiftness of work also depends on the relationship because obviously uh, the more swiftness you require, the more it, it, you have to look into, dig into the relationship that you have with the colleagues, your friends, your students, whatever they are. That's how the different cultures work because even students from the polychronic cultures are different from the monochronic cultures because it's different time, space, and the concept is completely different. Uh, how you value your teacher, that respect, the amount of respect, it's all different in different places. And doesn't mean that the other culture doesn't respect the, the teacher or something like that. But obviously the way they deal, the, the way they communicate, the way they interact is completely different to what we observe in polychronic culture um, or, or in uh, monochronic culture. It just depends where you are. And obviously there will be a lot of differences in relationships as well. Now we're talking about the concept of time that uh, one important element that we need to consider is that the concept of time is relative. How people experience time depend on their culture and the concept of time they're living in. Similarly, one good example is that as words lose meanings in translations. Similarly, we need a better understanding of time in different cultures as well. So the main point here is that the concept of time is relative where you are, how you experience this, depends on the culture you're living in. And it's, it's all, the word that we commonly use is time and space, we'll talk about it. It's very important to think about it. And here's one picture you can see that some of the countries is towards the monochronic, the others towards the polychronic concept of time. Uh, US, UK, Japan is somewhere in the middle. But obviously the concept of time, uh, as we've already discussed once, that uh, Japan is a very interesting case. It's a high context country. But when it comes to the concept of time, it's monochronic. They value time. I, uh, they have a very uh, different concept of time. They're very particular about time. They follow it a lot. And that's the interesting bit that despite it being a high context culture, uh, the concept of time in Japan is monochronic. Now, some of the countries we can look into comparison. Uh, monochronic is Germany, Canada, Switzerland, Australia, United States, Scandinavian countries. They all follow somewhere in the monochronic, uh, uh, monochronic concept of time and the other you can see that 
the Poloponic, Saudi Arabia, France, Egypt, Greece, Mexico, Philippines. These are some of the... I, France is a tricky one written here, but sometimes, yes, uh, because they've also depended a lot on the conventions and discussions. So we can think about it as well. But that's an interesting case as, as well, because since it's a European country, uh, mostly uh, they're also very particular about time. Uh, it's not just that, like high context culture, they will, they, they will let go of the time. They're particular about time as well. So what did we learn about uh, the high context and uh, the low context? And similarly, the concept of uh, polychronic and monochronic concept of time that uh, people experience time differently. Uh, that's the important point that each individual, the way he experiences, he or she experiences time depend on the culture they're living in. This is particularly important that no matter where you live, the concept of time will be different. Even in cities, if you're living in city, the concept of time in the villages or the semi-urban areas or rural areas will be different from from the fast-paced urban cities the rural areas the concept of time would be a lot different people wake up early they, they, they follow a different pattern that's how things are because that's what divides the urbanization and the rural areas and similarly an understanding of concept of time helps us in adaptability and that by understanding polychronic and monochronic, one can understand complex cultures better. This is very important that no matter where we are, but if we have an understanding of the concept of time, we can understand the culture in much better terms. And similarly, understanding causes effective communication. And this is for us, that the students of communication must always look for the means that how we can uh, go for effective communication, how we can be effective because communication is a very important tool that we can use in different cultures and the more we are clear, the more we have a better understanding of uh, holochronic, monochronic cultures and the concept of time uh, that, that's going to help us in effective communication. So this is pretty much what we learned from the session. So before we end our session, I'd, love, I'd like you to think about what is the polychronic and monochronic concept of time it's very important to think that what do you think about it and similarly how do you see Pakistani culture in this context and similarly how have you ever experienced this concept been to a different place where you thought that yes I'm observing time differently or space differently and what is your concept of time uh, have you ever discussed the term time and space and an interesting question would be obviously if you are a creative writer what about time travel have you thought about it as the something interesting have you ever seen a film or tv series that focuses on time travel or the different concept of time and space uh, for example a very good film interstellar it, it really discusses a lot about time and space because the earth time is different from the times and uh, outside in space so that's a very interesting film if you want to look into the concept of time maybe it can help you with creative writing as well uh, interstellar so this is pretty much it. This is our session for today. I hope you enjoyed the session. Uh, we, we discussed the polychronic and monochronic concept of time. And it's important to think again that most of our understanding of cultures depend on these things. It helps us in effective communication. It can help us in adaptability because the more we discuss these things, the more we have an understanding of indigenous or cultures that are new to us so yes this is pretty much it that uh, we have discussed already and uh, it's it's more about adaptability in workspaces the most of the problems that arise outside the cultures especially when you go out is the communication gap especially between the management and individuals or especially if the asian workers go to europe uh, the biggest problem that usually arises is basically the concept of time uh, and similarly, it can be vice versa as well, anyone coming from Europe to our parts of the European countries or somewhere else, uh, it will take a while for them to understand that uh, not everything works according to schedule, not everything is about deadline, uh, sometimes you have to focus more on other things. So it's a pretty tricky uh, understanding, but it happens only when you spend some time, you know about it when you talk to people. You get better understanding when you interact with individuals, no matter where you are, the best way to understand the culture is when you go out there, you interact with people, you try to understand the customs, traditions, it helps a lot. So this was our session for today. These are some of the references that we've used. 
So I hope that uh, you really enjoyed the session. Uh, we'll be having some uh, good time in the future as well. We'll be having some good discussions. So thank you very much for joining us. I hope you really enjoyed the session. Good luck for the next one. We'll be seeing you soon. So thank you for once again for joining. I hope you really enjoyed the session today.